Moeni Nonke. This is Wahid Adam, and I'm excited to be a part of Humans of Telecom. Hey everyone, a very warm welcome to Humans of Telecom, the unplugged podcast. This is your host Anurag Agarwal, Chief Growth Officer at Globe Tele Services. While the podcast has been around for a while and thankfully been gaining industry attention, for those dropping by for the first time, this podcast takes you behind the scenes of the fast-paced world of telecom and showcases the human side of some of the most well-known individuals within the space. And today, we feature an individual who is extremely well-known and a very popular face in the industry. I personally find him to be one of the most charming individuals within my network and above that, an amazing contributor to so many industry initiatives worldwide. Whether it's managing his super successful venture in Africa, being a long-term board member of the Mobile Ecosystem Forum, as well as so many other industry bodies, or supporting other entrepreneurial initiatives for men and women alike, this man does it all. So please join me in welcoming Wahid Adam, Executive Chairperson at iTouch. Wahid, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for agreeing to be a part of this journey. We'd love to hear more about you, which part of the world do you belong to, and from where are you joining this podcast today? Thank you, Anurag, and I'm really excited to be here. What an opportunity. Thank you. I am currently sitting in Cape Town, South Africa, where I live, and uh, yeah, we're in winter, it's still a sunny day, and uh, very excited to be on your call. Wonderful. And uh, while well, Cape Town is a fantastic place, I've thankfully been there sometimes, and you know, I think it's the perfect mix of work and pleasure put together. You know, I think you guys really know how to live life well and still manage to find time to work. That's how I would put it. I think that's amazing. Thank you. And, and in, fa- in fact, let me just say that I'm not so sure if you are aware, but just a few days ago, Cape Town was voted the number one city in the world to visit and live in. <laughs> I personally don't find it surprising. I think one has to visit Cape Town to just look at the magic around there. So whether it's the Table Mountain or it's your waterfront, I think it's it's a beautiful city to visit and to live. So I can totally imagine that you guys would be number one. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And in terms of your origins, uh, are you originally from South Africa? Which part of the world do you belong to? Uh, Anurag, I am second generation South African. Uh, so born and bred, so were my parents. But my grandparents come from four different parts of the world. My paternal grandparents come out of Persia and India. And my maternal grandparents come from Turkey and Germany. So, you know, like like South Africa is known for as a very diverse uh, nation, um, otherwise known as the Rainbow Nation, uh, I guess it speaks true to my roots. Interesting. So no wonder you are such an eclectic mix of so many cultures put together. (laughs) And I'm personally very happy that at least one fourth of you somewhere comes from my side of the world as well from India. So yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Wonderful. So as I said in the introduction that, you know, you do so many things and you've achieved so much, which is amazing and so inspirational. What's the journey been like for you? How did you get into telecoms? Were you doing something else before that? Did you stumble into telecom or this is something which you always wanted to do what what's your journey been so far well absolutely an interesting story because it was it was sort of an accident um i started my entrepreneurial journey when i was 22 years old and had my first business in the brick and mortar industry and in the early 2000s i stole that business but during that process um i was helping two young and upcoming lawyers Uh, that needed some funding. And at the end of their unfortunate journey, they came back to me and said, we we can't return the money you loan us, but um, we have these shares in a startup company, which we cannot do anything with. Would you take it over? And and that I did. The startup, unfortunately, didn't work, but it was in the telecom space. And uh, once I learned what that space is about, it was intriguing. Just the opportunities that, that, that was within that space the unknowns within that space, and uh, and through that, I entered the world of the telecom side. Interesting. And uh, in this entire journey, if I ask you for one or two most memorable or impactful moments, would do you have something for us? 
Yes, I think, um, you know, iTouch today has got a lot of experience in the African environment, which is kind of why we so-called the experts of the African environment. But the interesting part and how we get there is through actual experience, right? And I would say one of the most memorable times is when we launched iTouch in Nigeria. Firstly, it's it's one of the biggest populated uh, countries on the continent. And secondly, its regulatory environment and its business culture was so different to that of South Africa that that was sort of an awakening. And um, let's put it this way, you pay to learn those lessons. And um, the other part of that was everything you thought about that market. In other words, the research that we did also didn't turn out to be the way it really was on the ground. So gaining, gaining that experience of launching in a country on the continent that was so different taught us so many lessons, um, you know, that it's hard to kind of uh, replicate that again as an experience. Um, and has given us so much more to understanding the environment of this continent. Hence why we, we do what we do on the continent for so many of our customers. Oh, and I can, and I can add to that by saying, you know, I, I managed to get myself onto the front cover of the local newspaper wearing Nigerian guard um, together with the head of the of NTA, as they call it, which is their tele- television broadcaster. Um, so, yeah, you know, through that journey, it was exciting. Um, but left a lot of memories, both good and bad, I guess. Wonderful. I think both these stories seem interesting. And uh, I, I guess Africa itself, you know, it's so huge when one thinks about it. It's so many worlds within a single world, you know. So yeah. I can totally imagine that venturing out into other geographies, it's always a challenge. But I think it's it's a very significant learning experience, even when I... Uh, thankfully started stepping out of India and seeing so many cultures overseas. There is so much one learns. And of course, if you're trying to start a business itself, then then God save you. There is way too many more learnings. As, and as you rightly put it, you literally are paying to learn. So I can totally resonate with that. <laughs> Absolutely. And Africa, as you said, you know, it's 54 countries. Each sovereign nation has its own regulatory environment, its own business culture, its own dynamics. Um, so it's it's a it's a really big continent, and unlike the U.S., which may have fifty states, you know it's pretty much the same culture. Um, Africa is very diverse in that regard. I can imagine. So uh, shifting gears more from the telecom side to the human side, more about mm-hmm. Wahid now. So while, as I said, that the world knows you, so many people in the industry interact with you every now and then. But uh, if we ask that, if there's something shocking, something unknown about Wahid that you'd like to share with us and with the listeners today, what would that be? One is I, I have an absolute passion to see the continent of Africa change, or let's say the narrative of Africa change to one that Africa will uplift itself using its resources, using its skill sets, using its a unique environment to grow. And I think what people may not know is I do a lot on that, on that side of development on the continent other than just being in the telecom space. So I have a very deep passion around entrepreneurship. I do believe that entrepreneurship is going to change the, 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 the world at large, of course. But in particular, I think Africa has a very unique uh, uh, opportunity and the design of these entrepreneurs to be developed, to take advantage of the local problems that can be solved. And in so doing, you know, build the continent, build the country, uh, the countries of the continent and uh, becoming uh, an independent continent rather than the narrative that we all know of Africa being the needy one. So, yeah, that is something I do uh, very passionately. So... Wahid, you've you've given a very formal answer. So while we'll take that and our listeners will will appreciate that. But uh, I'm sure that there is so much more. So I'm going to move to the next question. But I'm hoping Mm -hmm. here we get to hear a bit more about Wahid as a person. So my follow-up question is, uh, you mentioned passion. So while yes, entrepreneurship is a passion which drives you immensely. 
but mm-hmm. uh, beyond that if there is something else that wahid does to recharge himself or has some other passions what would they be so i'm always of the believer that the harder i work the harder i've got to play so you'll still find me going for a good friday afternoon lunch with friends uh, or dinner um, with some good drinks on the table and eventually hit the nightlife of cape town or any other city i may be in till the early hours of the morning so yeah and rug i i know how to party hard and often it's a release and a way to recharge so that when i sit again you know at my desk working um i <laughs> I've kind of come in with a clean and clear mind. So yes, that's I guess the shocking side. I certainly still <laughs> like love to bur- to burn the candle uh, on both ends. Well, frankly, my friend, that's also not very shocking about you. We all interacted <laughs> with you at so many events and we've seen that you're literally the life of the party. So that's also nothing shocking. But but still for all the listeners out here, if uh, you're at an event where Wahid happens to be there uh, do reach out to him say hi maybe you can give the reference of the podcast if you don't know him from before and you will just be fascinated by the charm of this man called Wahid Adam so you know <laughs> i really feel that uh, partying is something which is synonymous with you rather than being shocking about you but very well once again we'll take that answer <laughs> <laughs> thank you <laughs> All right. So, uh Wahid, now we have two games, okay, that we play <laughs> with uh our guests. So, the first <laughs> one is uh that I'm going to be putting up five words in front of you. And <laughs> for each of the word, uh we'd love to hear the first thought that comes to your mind. So, as I always tell my guests that uh, be spontaneous, be human. So, I look forward to your responses and what are your thoughts? <laughs> uh, are you ready <laughs> for this? Yes. Perfect. So, the first one is uh telecom people connection all right motivation um progress what would you mean by that that i think motivation is something that could result in progress if i'm incentivized or or motivated to do something ultimately um i could end up progressing to creating a new product or a service or so i think motivation is required for progress even if it's just to go to the gym i mean to be motivated to go to the gym you know progress coming up looking healthier uh, feeling healthier uh, and living longer i guess in a in a healthier way so often we need motivation to, for progress absolutely the third one is family love i think family is an embodiment of love and you know i have three kids um so that love is really it runs deep to the point that i think uh, is to me life itself wonderful and uh, your three kids are they based with wahid in the wonderful cape town or are they in other amazing parts of the world and does any of them plan to continue wahid's a uh, wonderful legacy as well of running i touch <laughs> <laughs> so yes I, i i'm fortunate enough to say that all three kids are with me in cape town um uh-huh. i uh, have a son who's 26 and another son is 9 and then a daughter who's 6 so you can see i've been doing this for a long time anurag <laughs> um my my 26 year old um when he was around 12 to answer your question about legacy he said to me uh, dad I just want you to know one thing is that when I'm older there's no way that I'm going to be joining your business because I want to have my own. And I turned to him and I said listen son I'm really glad to hear that because the time you're old enough you know I'm hoping to have sold my business and retire. So you know you better build your own. <laughs> well that's kind of where you went. But um, now he works in the mergers and acquisition space for an American company that has an office in Cape Town. So fortunately I have him here. um but he is getting the international uh, experience which is wonderful the other two are obviously in school and um, i can tell you that my two boys are really similar in my experience as a father bringing them up similar characters similar temperament and so on but having a daughter has been an absolute new experience for me um she's already you know ruling the roost as as they say and she's only 6 years old 
got me around a little finger as you, as, as they uh, describe. <laughs> but yeah, love it. So when you say family for me, it's, it's love. Wonderful. That's amazing to hear. All right. And uh, the other side of the same coin, uh, career. Um, future. Okay. Is that because the industry that we are in, uh, which is also part of your career, is that very future looking? Is that why you say future? Yes, I think, I think when one firstly embarks on a career, uh, it's to build out your work life and it's to build out uh, often um, the success of your personal life. So to me, career is about building out your future. But also in the telecom space, um, you know, it is dynamic in the sense that progress can happen so fast that if you're not looking into the future, uh, you may end up, um, you know, jumping off the uh, train of career and finding something else. So it is around uh, looking at and, and building your future. So I think that's what career is about. Perfect. And the last one uh, where we are today, podcast. I'm a rug. <laughs> I'm, I'm guessing you're not into podcasts otherwise. <laughs> well, you know, I've, I've been watching your, your uh, podcast uh, since the time you started, which wasn't even that long ago, but you seem to have had the good fortune of having quite a number of guests and, and eloquent uh, in their design. So, so, yeah, I love what you're doing. And, and it's a great, a great way to, one, get to know your guests, but also a great way to introduce your guests to the broader community. And, um, and, you know, we go back to that first word uh, when you said telecom and I said uh, people connection um, or connection. Um, this is the way we, we build the world in, in, in cross-country, cross-culture, cross, uh, you know, um, let's call it technology spaces or silos um, because telecom is broad, as you know. And your podcast is a wonderful way of bringing that all together. So well done, Anurag. Thank you. I think you put it in much better words than I could have. So <laughs> thank you so much for that. <laughs> My pleasure. All right. And now we move to the second game. And here mm -hmm. we ask uh, our guest to tell us three statements. Uh, two of them have to be truth. One of them has to be a lie. And the expectation is that, and especially with you, Wahid, the expectation is that all the three statements are so flamboyant and so exotic that it becomes extremely difficult to figure out which one is a truth, which one is a lie. So would you have three statements for us today? Absolutely. Um, as I said, I live in Cape Town and we're blessed with a lot of mountains and sea and beautiful hikes and trails and all sorts. So I would say that my first one is I love climbing mountains. Okay. Um, my second one is I... I'm a socialite and love the nightlife. Okay. And my third one is um, I love travel. I love experiencing different cultures and uh, people um, and, of course, places. So I would say those are my three. <laughs> Interesting. So while on one side all three of them look like truths, I'm sure one of them is a lie. And... Uh, I know for a fact that you love your nightlife. So the second one is definitely a truth. Yeah. I think uh, through our conversation by now, we've understood that Wahid loves different parts of the world and different people and different cultures. So while you very smartly try to portray that since you are in this wonderful <laughs> natural beauty <laughs> called Cape Town, you prefer hiking. So I have a feeling that that's the one which is a lie. <laughs> Well, Anurag, I have to say you got it right. <laughs> as much as I live in the mountains, I don't mind walking, you know, hiking on, 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 on planes that are easy accessible. But the minute you're asking me to rock climb, <laughs> right. then I would say no. I prefer my feet on the ground. Um, uh -huh. You know, let's say I'm grounded and prefer <laughs> to keep it that way. Yeah, no, absolutely. I'm I, I, not a fan of climbing uh, mountains. Interesting. But Wahid, uh, for those who've seen you, and uh, I definitely say that uh, you're in amazing shape whenever I've seen you. And uh, that definitely would mean that you are pursuing some or the other activity to uh, stay in shape, whether that's hitting the gym or something else. So what mm -hmm. is your fitness routine like? Um, irregular, sadly to say. 
but thank you for the compliment. Um, look, I think uh, I do travel a lot, and as a result, it is so difficult to get into a, a, a gym routine. But fortunately, living in Cape Town, you know, just behind me is a mountain trail, so it's not rock climbing, which I, I said I don't like. But the mountain trails are just magnificent to walk. The views, the nature. So that is one of the things I do uh, as often as I possibly can. Um, the other is, you know, walking on the promenade, which uh, I think you've experienced yourself. And it's along the ocean, and it's again just beautiful, and and and, and it, it's another fix for the mind when the mind's overworked. And then right. uh, there is a gym. I am a member of a gym. Uh, but that's the one that I either get into it and then I'm enjoying it or I struggle to be there at all. So it, there's no in-between. Uh-huh. All right. So, Wahid, on that note, uh, the final question of this section. So while we know Wahid's party life and work life, <laughs> but do you find some time to sit down and pick up a book or watch a movie or something? And if so, would you have one which is your favorite? Yeah, I, I, I'm not too much of a reader. Um, audiobooks seems to be the better one for me right now. But um, I'll give you a quick one of a book called Stealing Fire. I, it, it's two authors. In fact, I met the one. And um, it's around our connectedness to nature. So I'll, I'll leave it at there because I'd love to tell you about my favorite movie. And that is La La Land, if you know it. It's a musical uh, that um, has uh, Ryan Gosling and Emma Stone. It's a musical. So firstly, I love music. And uh, the, um, the soundtrack of this movie is just fantastic. And the uh, best part of it all is that it brings in a bit of a romance story that doesn't end in the typical fashion. So be this telecom personality I am, I'm also a romantic. You know, I have to admit that. Um, so to me, I love watching music and, and romance in one movie. That does it for me. So that would be uh, the movie that I recommend everyone to watch. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, music and romance, yeah, I can totally see you vibing well with that. So it's, again, it's, it's not something I'm surprised. Awesome. <laughs> All right. So on that note, uh, Wahid, we now come to our final section, our sign-off section. So hmm. two questions here. Firstly, if uh, somebody wants to meet you and get to learn more about you and also see some of your amazing dance moves, which are some of the conferences, events that you're attending in the coming few weeks, coming few months, or how can one reach out to you? Um, I will be attending the uh, ITW conference in Nairobi, Kenya. Um, In fact, I'm going to be a panelist at that particular conference, so definitely there. Um, and no doubt I'll be at the uh, MEF event in London um, where we gather for our board uh, AGM as well, as well as uh, the MEF Connect event. So absolutely those two are on my radar. Um, there's a couple that may be in the making, but I'm not so certain of those yet. And please, I reach out to everyone. You know, Please come to me and let's meet. I'd love to meet you. Awesome. And I'm sure some of the people will reach out to you, Wahid, after listening to this podcast. (laughs) Fantastic. (laughs) All right. And our final question, uh, which is our signature question. What does being human mean to you? What sort of a human being would you want the world to remember you as? Positive energy. I'd love to be the person that inspires. um, And when I say inspire, not from because of my career or successes or, I mean, I hope I inspire you through my failures because we all have that. Um, But, but inspire you as a human, you know, just knowing that we all connected. There's one source. Um, The sun has many rays, so we may see it from different angles, but there's really just one source and it includes our natural environment. And um, this, there's too much trouble in the world. So I'd love to be that person that's remembered, that's positive, that brought energy into your world, that inspires your world through love and um, friendship and, you know, honesty and ethics. And so when I'm not around any longer, Anurag, and you think of me, you're going to go, you know, that was a great guy to be around. That's the person I'd love to be remembered as. Well, uh, Wahid, I don't think I need to wait for the future to say this. I've always been saying that and I still stick to it. 
you're definitely an amazing person to be around with and i'm always going to stick to that <laughs> thank you very much anurag much appreciate that means the world to me absolutely and thank you so much waheed i appreciate uh, you took out time for this i know you've been running around you were in the us you were in marrakesh uh, you. i'm sure there's still more stuff lined up and you'll be hopping all around but uh, i hope you enjoyed this experience and on behalf of humans of telecom i thank you for your time thank you anurag and wish you all the best um, you, you know it's an amazing podcast and i look forward to hearing the future guests as well thank you thank you so much waheed and as always to all our wonderful listeners here thanks a lot for tuning into the show we hope this episode gave you a good glimpse of the human side of wahid adam somebody who comes with an amazing multicultural ethnic mix someone who has accidentally stumbled into the world of telecom and has made it one amazing place to be in someone who is an avid dancer and a hardcore party animal and finally a man who is inspiring through his positive energy and charismatic personality that for us is wahid adam so if you enjoyed today's episode do stay tuned in because we shall soon be releasing yet another episode and another compelling story from the telecom space and do follow the podcast on your preferred streaming channel on behalf of humans of telecom this is your host anurag agarwal signing off for now take care